Hello and welcome to another preview show here at Vitality Stadium, a muggy and rather foggy Vitality Stadium you'll see. I'm joined today by Matchday commentator Chris Temple. You'll notice I'm not Zoe, my name's Ian, and over the next few minutes we'll be going through a fun-filled, packed festive season and what we've got to look forward to over the next few weeks. Here's what's coming up on today's show. First we talk about the injury to club captain Simon Francis, the Cherries head to Old Trafford looking to cause an upset. Eddie Howell marks his 10 years in charge with the club. And we look ahead to the game with Watford in our first game of 2019. Before we get started on the football then Chris, unfortunately on Thursday night we had some really bad news. Simon Francis, a ruptured ACL and that's his season done with. Yeah, horrible, first of all, for Frano. We, we obviously send our very best wishes to, to him. Um, yeah, it, again, it's just so innocuous, isn't it? We've seen it with, um, you know, Lewis Cook on the training ground and we've seen it with Adam Smith at Newcastle. No contact, um, just the, the way his foot planted in the ground. Um, a horrible one um, for him. It looked awful at the time and, uh, you know, he's in considerable pain. So, yeah, um, not. It was, I guess it capped a pretty disastrous day all round, really, in terms of the scoreline. But for him now, I mean, he's been, he's the club captain. He's the focal point. He's a hugely respected figure in the dressing room um, you know the players look up to him and he has been a huge support I know for a lot of players when they've been going through difficult times so the roles are reversed now he needs his teammates around him um, to help him through it the, the one thing with Frano is that it happened to Callum Wilson when he was what 23 24 25 maybe Lewis Cook 21 22 he's 33 um, which is a, a whole different ball game I think in terms of the recovery because you know, with the greatest of respect, he won't have as much time left in the game as those guys. His body has taken more wear and tear down the years than, than other guys who are trying to recover from this. So, I mean, that's the, the key for him now is to, to try and get back in the early part of next season uh, and try and be the same player that he's become because he's, he's come so far as a player. Um, you wouldn't have thought when Bournemouth paid 25 grand for him that he would be here, you know, uh, playing the part that he plays in the Premier League these days. So, uh, I, I have no doubt in terms of his character, We've seen a lot of highs and lows as an individual and here at the club, of course, as well, and that he will be well-placed mentally to, to deal with it. The club obviously have the best possible treatment available now. You know, they'll be going out, I'm sure, to Dubai, as Adam Smith has done recently as part of his recovery. Um, and, of course, the, the other side of it, which is less important, I guess, from the grand scheme of things, is no right-backs. So if, you, if you've ever played there, PC, um, you could be in line for a game at Old Trafford. Absolutely right. And just to, to sort of draw a close to the Boxing Day game, a very strange game. Eddie Howe said himself, 5-0 perhaps wasn't a clear reflection of what happened. But I guess whatever way you dress it up, it, it wasn't a great day at the office for the Cherries. Yeah, I, I spoke to Azmir Begovic after the game and I sort of said to him, you know, it's 5-0 on paper, but actually the, you know, there, were, there were a few positives in there. And I think probably because players don't want to seem to be saying there were positives after a 5-0. The manager can probably say it, but for the players who've been involved, maybe they can't be seen to say there were positives after losing 5-0. But it was a funny old game, as they say. Um, you know, everything Spurs hit went in. Um, with a bit of luck, a couple of you know defensive mistakes as well, which are unfortunate and are just a bit too prevalent at the moment. Um, but but um, from Bournemouth's point of view, missed some good chances. You know the wee man with the header, very unlucky hit Junior Stanislas. David Brooks couldn't quite lift it over Larice Stanislas's header, Charlie Daniels' header. Um, obviously the offside goal as well. So it just didn't work out for Bournemouth on the day. It wasn't a five goal game. I think, you know, Spurs by a couple would probably have been fairer um, because they were comfortable. I don't think they had to play necessarily that well to win. Um, but yeah, just it's the errors and things at the moment and just that just lack of clinical edge, maybe a lack of confidence a little bit in front of goal. Um, Callum Wilson wasn't able to get into it much at Wembley. Um, so yeah, that's one to, to quickly draw a line under and, and move on fast. So Eddie Howe has said recently that he thinks his side have actually played quite well against um, teams like Manchester United, teams like Tottenham, and of course it's Manchester United coming up next. We know it's not going to be easy, but what are the sort of points to be positive about from a Cherries perspective? Well, against United recently, they've been competitive games. Um, let's, for example, as we're going to Old Trafford, let's reflect on the last two there. Um, last season, a, a narrow 1-0 defeat. Bournemouth had quite a lot of pressure at the end of the game, could have nicked something. Um, and then the season before, of course, was the, the famous 1-1. It's not often, there's not many famous 1-1 draws in the world but um, you know having gone down to, to 10 men in that game um, with Andrew Sermon being sent off and it was of course a day when Eddie Howe was uh, sick as a dog and barely even made it to the touchline that day as well so uh, yeah that was a you know a highlight the first time they'd got something at Old Trafford and then of course here what just a few weeks ago um, done in the last minute by by Marcus Rashford in a game that Bournemouth probably not only deserved to get a draw from but possibly could have won as well um, so yeah recent, I know Manchester United have changed manager since then and things have taken a bit of an upward upward curve for them but in in terms of the last couple of visits to Old Trafford, um, it seems to be a ground now that doesn't overawe them. It seems to be a place that they're, it's a big open pitch, you know, you can go and express yourselves. Um, and from that point of view, 
no fear really but the only problem is that they've just got off the back of a 5-0 hiding so um, the, the key is to move on very quickly from that they do come up against the United side who uh, have turned the corner at a bad time as far as Bournemouth are concerned Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has gone in there and as somebody who obviously gets the club and understands what United fans want to see and the best way for United to play I mean it's amazing how players can suddenly start playing two weeks after they couldn't play um, Paul Pogba suddenly is, you know, um, bounced back to be some sort of world beater. So, yeah, they, they're going there at a bad time in terms of the the Solskjaer honeymoon, if you like. But, you know, we've seen Southampton's honeymoon bubble end this week for their new manager. So who's to say that Bournemouth can't go there and uh, puncture Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's dream start? Exactly right. And they have scored eight goals in their last two games. Bournemouth, as you say, maybe not going into the game with the back of the best form after the Boxing Day defeat. What's the best sort of setup? Bearing in mind, of course, Simon Francis isn't, isn't available either. What's the best sort of setup in terms of trying to get a result at Old Trafford? I think the best sort of setup is at the moment whatever Eddie Howe's got. Um, to be honest, I mean, I, I can imagine they're going to go three at the back. They, they presumably have to. Um, the likes of Diego Rico and, and even Jordan Ibe, you can imagine coming in for in contention, having you know, with the Chelsea game in mind, because actually you wouldn't necessarily want to throw those two in in that sort of game as wing backs um, without that Chelsea game for a bit of confidence for both of them and for the manager in putting them in. Um, but they, you know, they showed in that game that they they can handle not only the big stage playing away from home against quality players um, with the home side having all the expectation and a lot more of the ball. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Diego Rico given a given a go this week. The, the Ryan Fraser is the one, isn't he? Because we've seen him play right back in the past. But I think I said on the last preview show, you don't really want your most creative attacking player playing at right back or even necessarily at right wing back. Um, so that is an option for Eddie Howe. Um, if we if we're talking about a back three, then it's a, it's a sort of, I would say, a toss-up between Tyrone Mings and Charlie Daniels. Charlie's had a difficult spell recently. Um, whether he you know, gets taken out the firing line or whether you know, Eddie Howe's been pretty loyal to him, um, whether we see him play as a left wing-back maybe and, and Tyrone Mings on the left of a back three. But I think that, that looks like the only way they can go. I don't think they've got anybody to play as a right-back in a, in a flat four. So from that point of view, it's not ideal because you want to go to the places that, you know, like Manchester United, with the ideal setup, with everybody available um, and being able to play the best way that you can that you think will nullify them. Um, but it's, it could be a case of this is the team, this is how we've got to play, do the best you can. But it, it still could be effective. We've seen the back three work out well against big teams before. And I guess the thing is, with a big game like an old, a trip to Old Trafford, is that you've got to make the most of it and you've got to almost revel it and enjoy it and, and see what you can do and see if you can get the best result you possibly can. And Bournemouth second favourites, of course. And that's, you know, again, that might be helpful um, in terms of going there. No one will expect them to get anything. United expectation from their fans all of a sudden will be through the roof as well against a team like Bournemouth, who they will perceive to be beatable opposition. Um, you know, you look at the games coming up around the corner for, for the Cherries. Watford obviously are here in the, the first home game of, of 2019 and then Brighton Brighton in the FA Cup are after that, then you know, Everton away looks a bit tricky and then there's obviously midweek games in January as well with, with Arsenal and Chelsea looming not too far in the distance as well. So um, yeah, United away, it's a, it's, a, it's a game that you wouldn't bank on needing some points from, but I think the performance is the key thing. If you could get a point there, you'd be absolutely delighted. But then we look back at the Carabao Cup what, um, a week last Wednesday, lost the game, but everybody was feeling quite positive about it. So uh, a similar, if you can't win the game, a similar sort of performance at Chelsea, um, but ultimately, you know, funny things happen. We've just seen Leicester throw in two results that nobody would have expected them to get. So yeah, let's, uh, let's keep the fingers crossed that this could be, a, 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 I guess, a revelation of a moment at the end of 2018. And before we're back here at Vitality Stadium for our next game against Watford, it's also a special day for Eddie Howe. Ten years since he was appointed on the 31st of December 2008, that would be, good wouldn't mass, it? Good <laughs> <mass>. <laughs> um, and what a ten years it's been in that time. Yeah, of course, he's been away to Burnley in the middle of it as well. But yeah, ten years ago since he first got thrown the reins, if you like, on the, uh, away at Darlington. And here he is ten years on, about to go away to Manchester United. So I think that is a, pretty much about as polar opposite ends of the scale as, as you get. Um, as you say, what a rise it's been in that time. Um, so many highs and lows uh, for him mostly you know mostly highs one or two lows that in the early stages of his career that he didn't have a lot of control over but you know what he's achieved since then he, you know speaking to him about that he says you know he doesn't feel like he's changed too much as a manager in terms of how he approaches things um, I was asking you know how the preparation and things differed back then and he said he, he covers a lot of he covered a lot of motorway miles back then doing a lot of the watching himself there wasn't the analysis and the uh, the scouting network around the country um, back then I think the scouting network probably when Eddie Howe started in 2008 was probably if you knew someone that happened to be at the game give them a ring and see what they thought um, you know with no disrespect to Eddie and the, the setup but I think that's probably how it worked um, but yeah you, you look at him now I'm sure 
he, he's so invested in the job. He, he um, if the one thing that probably has changed is he probably devotes even more time now, probably the maximum amount of time that he could devote to the job. Um, but it is, you know, it is amazing what when you when you look back at those those ten years and where we all were ten years ago and what we were doing. I mean, I was working for Radio Solent, so I haven't gone anywhere. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Darlington away to, to Manchester United away, and of course he lost his first two games in charge. And he says that feeling about um, you know the feeling of, of losing when you're a manager is so much different to losing when you're a player. So he won his first game here against Wickham, um, and that he said again speaking to him, he said that gives him as much pleasure as, as it does winning a game now. So um, yeah. It's what, what a decade it's been. Um, I suppose a lot of people would just like to rub the Burnley bit out in the middle. Maybe at times Eddie would as well. But uh, yeah, remarkable, remarkable decade. And who's to know how much longer he will he will be here? Hopefully for the foreseeable future and beyond. But um, there's no doubt in what he's done in those ten years for, for this club. Yeah, we fast forward on ten years from that landmark um, opening, if you like. Back here against Watford, that's sort of apt. Amersham's where he's from. He was on the terraces at Vicarage Road before we moving down here as, as a young lad. So it probably makes sense that we're playing Watford and, and yeah. it's a really good blockbuster sort of game to start 2019 here. Yeah, I like that, absolutely. And Watford, of course, if we're looking at performances this season, well, the Watford away game, um, back in his old neck of the woods, Eddie, was probably right up there with the best performances this season. 4-0 um, winners, um, a team that, again, you'd probably have gone there happy with a point on the day, but Watford got blown away. Um, and they'd started the season really well, don't forget. They'd won the first few games. Uh, they've, they're like Bournemouth in that middle portion of the table at the moment in terms of the teams who are you know, capable of winning two or three in a row but also capable of losing and at the moment the gap between sort of 7th and 8th down to about 14th or 15th is, is pretty tight. Um, we've seen West Ham obviously beating Southampton this week, uh, they've you know, shoved Bournemouth down a place as well. Um, and just on the subject of that, by the way, if we're talking about calendar years, there was an interesting league table I saw this week of the calendar year of 2018 okay. rather than the um, the season, if you like. And at Bournemouth was seventh in that table outside of the top six. Um, had a great second half to last season and a great first half to this season, which for a 12-month calendar year has put them in a great position. Yeah, not bad at all. Um, but yeah, all in all, coming back here, good way to start, you know, under the lights. But again, that I would say off the back of Tottenham and obviously we're, we're speaking before the club have been to United, so they may be coming into Watford off the back of a fantastic 4-0 win at Old Trafford. Um, but either way, it's a game that you've got to look at and think, a bit like Brighton, a bit like Huddersfield. That's a game that needs to probably be, well, it needs to be a point at least. And I think probably that's one that there's a bit of weight on to get three, I would say. And it's been well documented, the form recently, of course. It doesn't help when you've got trips to both Manchester sides. You're playing Arsenal, you're playing all sorts of teams from the top echelons of the league. But now, I suppose, is the time of the season where it's sort of win or bust, isn't it? Now it's the time of the season where we're playing some of the teams around us, maybe even below us in the table. And now's the time we need to win and get our season back to, to the heady heights we had at the start of the season. Well, that's the thing. The platform they've got from that from that record-breaking start, you know, 26 points here, probably three more wins and, and safety, I would say. I don't think people think that anything more than mid 30s is going to be uh, needed to stay up this year um, but yeah as you say it's it's um, a period where and again we keep harping back to the same things but you think of the Newcastle game and people look back and go what a missed opportunity that was Huddersfield didn't play that well managed to win Brighton it was a bit more like it here and the feel good factor was back in the stadium so let's hope that by the time they get to the Watford game that you know the the positivity that that Brighton result exuded and the the performance of David Brooks who didn't get much of a chance to get in the game at Wembley um, you know let's hope that the players revel in, in that occasion as well uh, and, and you know, be able to, to capitalise, I guess, on the good start to the season and make it the best ever finish because that's the platform they've set themselves now. Um, there are definitely a, a number of worse teams who are going to be fighting out the bottom three places. And um, the question now is, can Bournemouth hang on to the likes of Everton and, and West Ham, who have obviously picked up and are going well? Even Leicester, look at Leicester now. They've they had a, a pretty non-spectacular start to the season and they're seventh. So that is the, the sort of middle chunk of the table now that, that Bournemouth are in. Um, no reason at all why they can't as we now enter the second half of the season, um, the United game is the first game of the second half of the season. They've played everybody. They've had a look at everybody. Uh, now's the time to start doing a few doubles over people. And we'll be here, of course, for every step of the action from Watford, Manchester United and beyond. We hope you join us too and we hope you have a wonderful 2018 end of the year and a wonderful New Year's Eve.